I can. Yes, it does. Okay, continue. Um, I don't know how the whole um, officer thing works. Right. It's supposed to be the first meeting in in the year or something. Uh, it had been, but then I looked it up, and it, it actually is, and that doesn't make sense since so many of your the terms uh, change over January first. Um, and so I I reviewed your your bylaws um, a little late, but um, the it was actually supposed to be in uh, your first meeting of July. So I guess what I would recommend is that your next meeting of February, you consider holding holding um, elections to get you back on track. Okay, well, that, that makes sense. Um, from, from my standpoint, um, I am um, uh, happy to continue to serve or happy to yield to anyone else who would like to uh, take the reins um, and um, hopefully we'll have you know lots of people who want the job anyway we'll we'll deal with that when in next meeting yes i will add that to the next agenda okay excellent um i guess we'll do road call to make sure that we have a quorum because i can't see the all of the thumbnails up there okay so steve clocky here matt pence here cheryl brown here and john mailing here okay uh well, jen balliot is um is coming but she needs to come late she has a conflict tonight um okay. so it sounds like she'll be here for the public hearing but obviously not right now okay um as regards public comments, um, I uh, it occurs to me that it might be helpful for members of the community to know that the uh, subject of uh, tonight's um, public hearing has to do with matters that relate to uh, action regarding uh, wetlands defined on the uh, Manresa Island property. Um, it is not within the purview of this commission to deal with uh, anything else, uh, which might include storage of materials or uh, ultimate use of the property. Um, that simply isn't um, what uh, we're here to, to talk about and to uh, work on tonight. So anyone who's uh, standing by uh, wanting to contribute uh, in either of those areas or any other area besides that of uh, wetlands. Um, you're more than welcome to stick around, but uh, we want to make sure that you know that, um, uh, that that's not, that's not going to be something on the agenda. And I'll be obligated to step in and, and redirect anyone who uh, didn't get that message uh, when, when the time comes. Um, do we have a uh, anyone on the? Uh... We do, and so if anyone, so public comment is different from public hearing. So public comment is a time when anyone can uh, provide comments to the really to the conservation commission, not as their role as inland wetland um, agency at this time. So your comments can't can't refer to any pending applications. And as Chairman Mullen. Uh, you know, accurately noted, there will be a public hearing at seven o'clock regarding Manresa. Um, but if you have any non-inland wetland permit related um, comments, you can use the raise your hand feature on Zoom and we will give you the floor. I, I don't see um, anyone and I, um, I don't remember for Colin, you dial, if you want to raise your hand, having a brain. You hit star nine if you're calling in to raise right. your hand. Thank you, Amelia. So we don't, we don't see anybody see. on the list at the moment? No, we don't. Okay. Uh, then the presumption is that uh, uh, any public comments that occur subsequently will relate specifically to the public hearings. Um, so let's move on to uh, item four, uh, 
uh, discussion the decision uh, 823 Lane uh, Strombau. Am I pronouncing that correctly? Strombau? Strombau. Um, uh, so the swimming pool. Um, um, I have I have read the minutes and I have uh, um, I have seen the um, uh, memorandum from staff on this uh, application. Um, Commissioners, does anyone have a question or a comment in regard to this uh, application to um, to bring forward? Okay. Um, well, it, it was uh, received at the last meeting. Uh, there didn't seem to be many comments then. Uh, the few comments that there were, I think the uh, Mr. Standby answered them. And um, so there is a draft resolution in the memorandum that I sent out. Um, to you if you are interested. Um, if not, you have uh, additional days to, to ponder it if, if you really want to. Well, if there's no, if there's no further uh, comment for uh, Mr. Strombau, uh, if, that, if that's he, is that you, Mr. Strombau, over there? Yep, that's me. All right, well, welcome. And um, uh, uh, if, if I, I think at this point, it's, uh, Commissioners, if any of you have the, uh, I do not have the physical copy of the uh, staff memorandum. Uh, so I would yield to any of you who do to uh, make a motion uh, on this application. Uh, I can, it's pretty simple. I can, I can move to adopt uh, the memorandum for S22588 um, as drafted by Alexis. Um, I don't think I have any amendments or anything like that. So, so moved. Okay. Uh, so um, I will second. Uh, is there any discussion? Does anybody have anything they want to um, add over and above what um, is contained in the uh, memorandum? Um, I know we had some concern about trees and, they've been, and that's been resolved within the, uh, uh, the resolution. Um, so moved, seconded. Um, uh, no additional comments that I can that I can see. Um, all in favor? I think we can do voice vote. Um, say aye. 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 Uh, any opposition? Uh, okay. The uh, motion carries. The application is granted. Uh, thank you, Mr. Strombaugh, and good luck. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Okay. Uh, We've now got almost 50 minutes until the commencement of the public hearing. Um, what we can do is to uh, move ahead to uh, the uh, items at the bottom of the agenda, the approval of minutes. Uh, we would need a uh, motion for that, I gather, Alexis. So moved. Okay. Uh, okay. I'll second that one too. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, Aye. All right, so we can go to approval of the minutes, um, which uh, I've, you know, I mean, I wasn't here for the session, but I read the minutes and I don't have any comments or questions about them. Anyone else? So I, again, I'll yield on the motion on moving the acceptance of the minutes. Who'd like to do that? I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. Okay, uh, Michelle Brown moves to approve, uh, to approve. I second the motion, all in favor? Aye. 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 Um, opposed? So that uh, minutes are approved. Um, now you have an ample amount of time to comment, Alexis. Uh, uh, <laughs> And we can, no we, can invite, we can invite Ms. Williams to step up too. She never gets a chance to, to you know, chime um, in. Um, absolutely, yeah. I've not been in the office all week. And so if um, maybe Ms. Williams can give, give us an update of the uh, happening. I've got a long list. Everything's good. We're, we're somehow surviving without you, Alexis. Mm. Uh-oh. No uh-oh, be careful. <laughs> 
Uh, Miss uh, Miss Mock has her hand raised. Did you have a uh, so I don't, the um so a tulip tree has been approved? <laughs> no, no, no. This is not related to tulip tree. I just okay. wanted to apologize. I wasn't uh, able to connect in the, in the last time, but uh, I just uh, would like to make you aware that uh, February second. It's the 50th anniversary of Inland Wetlands. I'm not sure whether or not you're aware of mm -hmm. it. So uh, the Kaku Lake is going to be celebrating it. And uh, I think you're supposed to have a party or I don't know, do something special. Right. Yeah, but you'll be, um, um, I'll be sending out a, uh, an invite that came in, I think today's um, email from uh, Denise Savto. Um, it is the 50th anniversary of the Inland Wetland Act, um, and there is um, a celebration of, of a, I think it's called World World Wetland um, Day, and um, other virtual events. But you'll be you'll be getting that uh, tomorrow. Thank you, Alexander. Okay. Um... Okay, since we, we are not likely to winkle any more comments from staff at this stage of the game, um, uh, I would only want to say that uh, from my standpoint now that the election is over and uh, we've got through the holidays, uh, that some of the items that were uh, more or less uh, items of interest to the Conservation Commission uh, might get a little bit more uh, traction than they have. The, the two that uh, most immediately occur to me are the establishment of a fee basis on property transfers that would feed into the uh, open space fund uh, for number one, and that's been approved by a uh, state bill, uh, 6221 or something, I can't remember the exact number of it, but it's very specific in terms of allowing that. Uh, almost to the point of encouraging it. Um, the other thing that I would um, like to see us, you know, uh, just maybe a little bit more involved and certainly more attentive to um, are issues relating to flooding, uh, the extent to which the uh, uh, inland wetlands that we specifically supervise um, impact uh, the increased uh, episodes of bad weather and runoff, um, uh, there's nothing specific there. I think that, that um, we need to work on other than simply um, including that in the considerations uh, that we make regarding um, applications and activities that are um, in the regulated areas. And that's it. If anyone else has anything to say, this would be a good time. Um, if we want to, um, retire until seven do we need another motion to do that um yes you'd need a motion for a recess until uh just before 7 p.m and i will well i move that we have a recess until uh the onset of the public hearing at uh at seven seven p.m Need a second for that. Okay. It's moved and seconded. Uh, all in favor, aye. Um, aye. Um, here, um, there's no no's that I can hear. So the motion carries, and we will see everybody at uh, a minute before seven or thereabouts. Okay, great. It, it is now seven o'clock. And uh, I, we will um, at this time open the public hearing to discuss application S21587, One Memories Island Avenue, Norwalk Power LLC. Excavation, grading, filling, and planning associated with sediment remediation activities in inland wetlands. Um, at this point, our, um, is an Norwalk Power represented? Are they here? Uh, yes, yes, they are. Okay, do we need to uh, take uh, a roll call again, um, Alexis? Yep, 
Yes, please. If we could take roll call and then I'll just go over some kind of um, yeah. um, record keeping basics for the public hearing. That would be great. All right. All right, John Mailing. Here. Oh, um, Cheryl Brown. Here. Matt Pence. Here. Steve Quacky. Here. And Jennifer Ballia. Here. Thank you. Um, so I just want to uh, note before you formally um, begin the public hearing that um, we did receive notice um, from the applicant of um, the mailing notice of the public hearing to all abutting property owners of record. And then additionally, this uh, public hearing tonight was published in the Norwalk Hour twice on Thursday, the 13th of January, as well as the 20th of January, um, noting it was an online uh, Zoom meeting. Um, and I don't know if we have anyone in the, looks like we have uh, maybe one, one person attending as a attendee so far, just a word about public hearings. Um, the Inland Wetland Agency is accepting public comments in addition to the application materials that they would normally base their decisions on. They, they during a public hearing, they allow um, comments from the public. Um, and what they're looking for are comments regarding the impacts to the inland wetlands and water courses. Um, so the, the Inland Wetland Agency is, is not kind of a mini EPA. Uh, they, they are a little bit myopic in the jurisdiction uh, before them, and that is how do proposed activities impact inland wetlands and water courses. And as uh, Chairman Maling had mentioned earlier in the meeting, um, the, the commission would appreciate uh, sticking to that, um, that subject. And so the, um, the procedure would be that typically the um, applicant has the, the opportunity to make a presentation and describe their, the proposed regulated activities that they're doing. The um, commission will then open the um, floor to public comment. Um, generally, they only allow um, you to, to uh, be unmuted to make make a comment. It's not necessarily a back and forth uh, conversation, but an opportunity for you to give them information um, that they may uh, not know in order to assist them in making, making an, an informed decision. And then um, the, the agency can ask questions to the applicant at any time. Um, and then the applicant will kind of have the last word with a rebuttal. And then if, if um, it sees fit, the agency may uh, close the public hearing at that time. Excellent. Thank you, Alexis. Um, who represents um, NRG at this point? Hi, I'm Andrea Steele. I'm with Aptim. We're the consultant for NRG and, um, and we prepared the filing that's before you. Thank you. I'm Sean, and I'm Sean Connery. I'm Senior Director of Environmental for NRG's East Region. Welcome to both of you. Um, if you would Thank like you. to take this opportunity to outline um, your uh, application, um, it, it would be appreciated. Sure, I can do that for you. I have, uh, I can pull up on my screen um, a few maps and um, just talk for a couple of minutes about what we're doing. Alexis, is that okay if I share my yes, screen? Yes, should be all set. Okay. So, um, and these were uh, the figures that I'm showing were all in our application package. So, screen is not showing yet. Oh. So. There, it's starting now. Okay, there you go. great. Perfect. So I just have a, a few figures. So um, you guys are all familiar with Norwalk. So this is uh, USGS of South Norwalk. This is uh, our site. So we have the northern part of the site is uh, forested and all the, the plant facilities, the developed parts, the southern part. Um, and then you have Norwalk Harbor and Long Island Sound to the west and south. Um, and 
um, tidal wetlands to the, excuse me, to the west, Norwalk Harbor to the east, tidal wetlands to the west. And this area with in the middle is where the wetlands that we're talking about tonight are located. So, um, so this aerial, so now we have uh, north is to the left-hand side of the page, so we've rotated. This is an aerial of the site, so Longshore Avenue um, is off to the, the left-hand side, so this road that cuts through the middle is the the main access road, Manitresa Island Avenue. And so we have these four wetlands, wetlands three and wetlands four, which are the two freshwater wetlands, which are the subject of the um, application before you. And then um, wetlands five and six, these are the two tidal wetlands where remediation is also planned um, and it'll be, it'll be done um, concurrently. So we have um, this main road is paved and there, it's hard to see on the aerial, but there is a, a gravel road that runs up between these wetlands that we'll be utilizing. And then this lawn area up here is gonna be where we stage um, the sediment for dewatering. So the plan, this is the most more detailed plan. So what we're gonna be doing is um, bringing our trucks in the, this is the, these big black arrows are the main access road and the gravel road that comes between the two wetlands. We'll be using those roads. We'll be setting um, timber mats into the wetlands and putting the excavator into the wetlands and they'll excavate the top one foot of sediment. This blue line is the extent of the sediment in each wetlands. This is wetland four, this is wetland three. So they will excavate all the material to dump trucks which will run around and then go um, to the staging area to manage it and all the sediment removed will be um, once it's dewatered will be transported off-site for off-site disposal and what else on this one um then we'll do the reverse to um to backfill it with clean material and then we will um, restore the plantings. Um, this figure may be hard to read, but um, I'll zoom in to the wetland three just as an example. So once it's backfilled, we will seed the area and then we're gonna be planting uh, combinations of trees and shrubs. And we listed in the table um, the various species that um, we plan to plant in there. And all this will take uh, from when we, once we get started to when we're done with planting about 10, 10 months, less than a year. It sort of depends on the season that we get started. And so we um, can plant, so we're not planting in the middle of winter. Uh, and that's the that's the gist of it. I can certainly go uh, discuss any other parts or pieces of it if you have specific questions. Well, I think uh, we may have uh, we and the um, and the public. Thank you for um, for that introduction. I think uh, it does a good job of explaining what's uh, what's at stake. Um, I am not, I do not, I can't uh, quote a uh, scientific uh, basis for this, but it's been my understanding that there is very, very little fresh water available for uh, seabirds in the um, coastal area. 
And to the extent that any fresh water, uh, perhaps rain, rain sourced, uh, can be um, uh, depended upon and restored and supported is, is you know, extremely important from a conservation standpoint. Um, the, um, do you anticipate when the job's done that there will be um, any kind of uh, what would be perhaps intermittent open water or is it all going to be pretty much just um, uh, soil and, and growth? Uh, you know, any, any sort of comment on, on what it's gonna look like when we're done? Our plan is to restore what's there. So it's a, a polystyrene uh, emergent wetland and that's what we're planning to put back. We're planning to restore the existing grade um, and, and plant it with native vegetation. Um, so the hope is that it will continue to be a freshwater wetland like it is now, same, same function as it is now. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else? Any other commissioners? Comments? Um, um, yeah, I do have a question. Now, now, what is in the sediment that's being removed? Uh, there are metals, some select metals from historical operations at the at the facility. Okay, and uh, how deep do the are the metals currently in the soils? And how, how did you how did you find out how deep they were? We've been doing investigation sediment um, at the site for a number of years. And um, based on that sampling, we will be removing the top one foot uh, based on the ecological risk assessment. Okay, thank you. And this is being overseen by the DEEP. Uh, to what extent do they um, come in after the fact and take a look at what, what it is that you've done? Uh, so there's two different parts of DEP uh, that we work with. So the remediation division is who's, who we've been working with for a number of years to, to come up with this plan for remediation. Uh, and, and they have completed their review of the plan. So it's, it's up to us to implement the plan that they reviewed. Um, and the land and water resources division um, is who permits the work in the tidal wetlands. And so they will, you know, as part of that permit, you know, we have to document that we executed the work to plan. And, and then close out that permit with that division of DEP. And, and presumably not talking about the tidal wetlands, we're talking about the inland freshwater wetlands. Um, someone from DEP will come down and take a look and compare notes to see that um, what has been done is what was originally outlined in the plan. I, I don't know that they come down in person, but we definitely have to document for them that we completed. Um, there's a, this remediation is part of a, a wrap of remediation, remedial action plan. And, and we have to submit after the work is done that a completion report to document that the work was done according to the plan. Mm -hmm. But there's no specific arrangement to have someone from DEP come down and physically uh, review the uh, uh, the result of the plan. Not that I no, that's not that's not their standard practice. Okay. The way, just so I can comment a little bit here. The way the state of Connecticut is set up to deal with remediation um, across the entire state. And it's similar to a lot of other states in New England where they have a program where there is a, in this case, a licensed environmental professional. Um, and the licensed environmental professional is also on the phone with us and are on the call and that's um, Andy Walker. 
and he is uh, registered and licensed by the state to, to close these sites pursuant to the regulations. Um, so what he, he, he's guided by, you know, a, a code of conduct for professional licensed and environmental professionals. And um, he submits a plan to the state that they ultimately review and, and approve, or at least um, tell us that they've reviewed it and they, that we can proceed. And then it's, uh, you know, Andy Walker is the one that actually uh, certifies. Now, both the EPA and DEEP have oversight and audit privileges. They can come on site anytime to review what was done and to ensure that it was done according to the, the like, uh, like Andrew and say, the remedial action plan. Okay, is Mr. Walker with us this evening? He is. I am indeed. It's hard for me to tell with the Zoom screen whether people are here or not. So I have to just sort of ask if you're here. Um, I don't know, raise your hand to throw something or, or whatever might work. Uh, I, I'm here, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Um, are you remote, you're, you're somewhere far away? Mm -hmm. He's on. He's uh, on video. If we, if we, Andrew, if you take down the screen, oh. the share, you'll be able to see him. There you go. Hi. Sorry. <laughs> um, and 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 the the uh, is there a specific process that you that you go through? I'd be very interested to know how. I mean, I understand what NRG is going to do, and I'm confident uh, that they will do it the way they have specifically said that they're going to do it. But how? But there needs to be some sort of uh, checks and balances, and I'm just, you know, curious about that part of it. Uh, that somebody comes down and looks to see if the turtles are facing in the right direction, or whatever it is that needs to happen to make sure uh, that it's that it's right. Right, I I'm right with you. So typically, the way that this works, and this is the way this is going to work is that we'll put together um, a bid spec package and we'll put it out to bid for contractors with yellow iron. They'll have to, and whoever wins it, um, they will do the work, but we and NRG will both oversee it. So we will have boots on the ground. I'll have, um, we have uh, several technicians that know the site pretty well. They do some of the groundwater sampling and such and they are experienced. They know how to follow wetlands remediation plans and hold the contractor's feet to the fire. I also will go down, but they will be our eyes and ears. They do a daily report to us. Um, Andrea will do the day-to-day. -day. Um, I will check in also. And then eventually we need to write a completion report when we're done. We do a final site walk with NRG and then we'll do a full completion report to DEP. And then I have to stamp and sign it as a professional engineer of record. So it's pretty robust. Good. Well, the, the um, representatives that you mentioned, are those people that we might know? I mean, soil scientists that work in this area or? Um, no, it's part, part, part of our team. We have 5,000 people, 5,000 engineers and um, of all different disciplines. So it'll be, it'll be someone from our staff Oh, okay. um, yeah, so we can't always guarantee it's going to be the same person, especially if it's a long, long job. But it'll be somebody who's, you know, connected with you rather than an outside uh, consultant or something. Absolutely. One of our longtime co-workers, it'll be essentially, um, you know, we do the project management and the construction management and the oversight of it. Okay, that's great. Thank you. You got it. Anyone else? If I understand this correctly, you guys have to do this as part of your process to close the plant? The sediment remediation, yeah, it's one, one of the steps. Yes. Okay. I'm not sure if I missed it earlier. How, how far, how, how deep does the, uh, the metals go? I know you're just remediating the top foot. Does it go down lower? Uh, we have sediment data from deeper intervals, but uh, only the top one foot um, was the, the subject of all of our plans for remediation. Where are those rules defined that you only look at the top foot? Uh, this stems from s several years back and forth 
uh, discussions with DEP and going through an entire ecological risk assessment um, for the for the site as a whole for the wetlands. Um, so it's it's not one. I, I can't point to one thing in the RSRs that says one foot, but that's that's the result of all of our um, all of the science behind where we are today. There's no regulation. That's kind of what you guys feel is a best practice. There, uh, there's no regulation that says just do one foot. Is that what you're? Yeah, that's what I'm talking. About. Yeah. No, no. The the regulation um, the regulations have to do with uh, achieving achieving a, the the risk risk level. It's all based on risk assessments. So all that was done with multiple sampling events over the years. Okay, is that... Um, is that sufficient, Matt? Um, I, I understand what she's saying. I, um, I, I, I don't know. I mean, I'm not thrilled about the... Uh, look, I'm not an expert in this area, right? And clearly these metals go way deeper than a foot. How long? No one's here to tell us, I guess. How deep? No one's here to tell us. So, I mean, perfect world. Uh, I, I don't know. There'd be some... Some better guidance in my mind, but um, you know, uh, maybe I can do some research on my own. Yeah, and just just keep in mind that you know, as an inland wetland agency member, you are um, you're reviewing an application bef before you where they want to do certain certain activities, and the activities that they're proposing is to dig one foot down and um, remove those soils and you know replace it with clean soils, and there, there is a, um, there is a science-based process that the state uses to, um, in order to approve that remediation plan, and and um, so this the state of Connecticut, deep is in charge of. <laughs> Uh, identifying the adequacy of remediation plans. You don't, you as an inland wetland agency don't necessarily need to um, assess the adequacy of the removal, if that makes sense. So you can think of them as any other applicant. Um, if an applicant comes in to say, um, to construct a pool in a, in a backyard, um, that applicant is only applying to do a pool you can't really tell the pool applicant that um, you like the pool, but it would be better if they also had a pool cabana, um, if that makes sense. Yeah, um, I get what you're saying. So I think yeah. what I was saying is that, you know, Department of Environmental Protection has, has been involved and has, has looked at this and has, a regulatory body has decided that this is sufficient. Is that correct? Yes. Well, it does bring up it does bring up, I mean, obviously, or I shouldn't say obviously, because nothing is obvious. Um, it's wetlands, it's defined as wetlands. And um, I would love to take it on faith that nobody's gonna do anything that's gonna change it to the extent that it's no longer wetlands. Uh, right. You know, there is underlying soils. Um, if you go down three feet, then you might pick up the underlying soils and it would drain away and it wouldn't be in wetlands any longer and we'd be at the lot worse off for it. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that I'm sure is part of what DEP goes through. Um, that's what they're charged to go through. Um, so from my standpoint, I make the assumption that a foot is enough to remediate the uh, pollution uh, but not so much as to uh, interrupt the uh, definition of the property as wetlands. Yeah, uh, and uh, one, one thing I, I'd like to add, and Andrea, it might be beneficial just for the for the commission to understand 
maybe you pull the uh, the site map back up and show the the pilot test areas. So we actually did a pilot study to ensure that what we are doing here is is going to be protective of of the wetlands and 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 the and the metals migrating back through the 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 clean fill that we're putting on top. So we're replacing contaminated fill with clean fill. And we did a pilot study to ensure that this, this would work. And maybe you want to pull that up, Andrea, and just talk mm -hmm. through it. And that was uh, two or three years ago, we did this pilot study. We are actually in front of the commission to get the approval for that as well. Yeah, so sorry, five just- Five years ago. <laughs> Right, so you should be able to see my screen. So uh, we did two test cells in wetland four, freshwater wetland, and we did two in wetland five, the tidal wetland, but the same setup. Each wetland got two 20 by 20 pilot test um, squares, and we put them in over the course of the year, Did a lot of sampling and then um, reported back to EPA and DP remediation division. And that's what that discussion is what fed into the finalization of the sediment wrap. If I'm not mistaken, you uh, came before us at that time also with that plan. For the, for I mean, the pilot the test cells. What we're doing with the pilot test cells and um, explained it to us at that time. Y yes, yep. Okay, um, any other commissioners have uh, comments or questions? I want to open it up to uh, the public uh, as soon as possible. Uh, do we have people online, uh, Alexis? I'm assuming that we do. Yes, and if you are a... Um member of the, the public um, and would like to speak, you can please use the raise your hand feature on Zoom and we'll take you in the order that you've raised your hand. So we first have uh, Ms. Diane Loricella. And good evening. <clears throat> good, e good evening, commissioners and um, Ms. Cherichetti. For the record, my name is <clears throat> Diane Loricella. Um, I live in Norwalk. I for about almost two years, I lived in Village Creek, which is very close to this, the uh, site that is uh, up for your consideration. Um, I think it is uh, terrific that NRG is beginning to, and is in the process of continuing a remediation on this site, which has been contaminated for a long time, even the previous um, owner. Um, I very much appreciated Mr. Pence's, Matt Pence's um, questions, and I agree with him. I wanted to point out to the commission that the cleanup standards depend on the use, the RSRs, the remediation standards, depend on the use of the property. And when I saw that they were being allowed by the state at the suggestion of their LEP, Mr. Walker, that a one foot uh, removal uh, was all that was being asked for. What came to mind was the following. And I just put this forth as a quick question for the commission. Has the commission through uh, the staff requested a second opinion by an LEP on behalf of the city of Norwalk who has the responsibility, of course, for protecting not only the public health, but also the shellfish health, the health of the Long Island Sound, because my understanding is that this property in this section is subjected to flooding. And with climate change, we will be experiencing and have already begun experiencing sea level rise. So I think the question that Mr. Pence asked sh should be answered more, much more adequately than the consultants that were presented to you tonight, Ms. Steele and uh, even Mr. Walker, you have a right as commissioners to ask what the underlying soil, the depth of the contamination, the extent of contamination. So I guess I 
respectfully disagree with the comparison to a pool and a cabana house, you do have the right to request as to whether this particular project is adequate. One way to do so is for the city of Norwalk to look at its long list of consultants that also are LEPs and see if they could just do a quick look-see, review what NRG and their consultants and the LEP that remember NRG hired Mr. Walker, he will tell you that he could lose his license if he does anything that is uh, beyond the scope or is not correct. I am not questioning his integrity nor his professionalism, but be aware that he is paid by NRG. I have, uh, I'm a professional consultant, environmental consultant that mostly does environmental site assessments, which is where you find the extensive contamination by the history of the use. And I'm sure that um, NRG has done those studies. I have not read most of them. I was involved with the Manresa Association taking a look at the future uses of the site if the city ever acquired it. That is not the case here. But number one, I do believe this commission has a right to request a little more information about the extent of contamination and whether the proposed mere one foot removal of contaminated soil is adequate enough to protect said wetlands that remain and also the runoff into Long Island Sound. Uh, that, is your, that is your job. That is one of your, your, your jobs and you have every right to ask it. I also happen to know that no one on the commission, nor do you have to be an expert on soil remediation, metals and the like. But you do have a right to ask that the city hire someone, and they've done this before. It's, there's precedent set both on this commission and others to just have a professional LEP. There's a long list that the city has used in the past to look at what is being proposed and to see if in their professional opinion, Mr. Walker's plans, Ms. Steele's plans and Sean Connery uh, representations are adequate. The second thing I just wanted to say is, I'm assuming this will be taken care of, but I just wanted to put it on the record that when traditionally you do have trucks coming in and out of a site that, uh, and you do have a right to ask for conditions of a permit, which would include making sure that no, none of the trucks are tracking any contaminated soil off the property. Now it is a very long driveway. I'm familiar with the site enough to know this. So I'm assuming they have a, a tracking a gratings that that's picks up you know, any contamination that might be on the trucks. But I think the this commission does have a right to know that this removal and remediation will, will be done using the best management practices to keep the site safe, the public safe, and any um, adjacent wetlands. Uh, as we know, we have coastal wetlands. Um, would there be idling, uh, noise, um, these are things that um, I think uh, should be, um, while they may not be part of your inland wetlands law, um, these are the type of things I wonder about uh, for the sake of the community and, and the, uh, and the uh, environment. But mainly the, the issue I, I'd like to focus on and I hope that um, someone will ask is, um, is uh, to more, uh, uh, more um, illuminate the commission and the public watching this as to what is the extent of contamination. Quite frankly, the state of Connecticut, who I have a lot of respect for and I used to work for, are very short on staff. And usually what used to happen when I was a regulator is if a town doesn't show uh, any concerns, the squeaky wheel gets the grease. So they may have eyeballed this, but they totally depend upon Mr. Walker because they have so few staff. So it really behooves the city because of our multi-million dollar shellfish industry and the native shellfish beds that do surround this area for us to do a little better job in doing the due diligence and not just depend on the NRG or the applicant. Thank you for allowing me to speak and I look forward to your good due diligence. Thank you. Alexis, do we have other uh, callers? 
We do not now. It looks like um, the other attendee has left. Uh, but it is some, yeah. But there is no one, no one remaining to speak. Okay. Are we, um, how are we time wise on this application? Do we have the opportunity to uh, reflect on it until the next meeting? Um, so for um, public hearings, to, are you to, to keep the public hearing open or to close the public hearing and um, make your determination? So if you close the public hearing, your, your decision is based on the information provided in uh, the record, which is everything that you've um, seen up to this point. And we will need a motion to close the public hearing. You would. Right, so you can um, you could keep it, if you wanted to close the public hearing. You could close the public hearing, and then you have sixty five days to render a decision. Um, the public hearing you can keep open for a maximum of, of thirty five days. So you, if you uh, felt that there was additional information that you needed to to uh, gather before uh, making your decision, you could continue the public hearing to the next meeting. Um, did that answer your question? Yes, thank you. Um, <clears throat> is there uh, sentiment among the commissioners to uh, extend or to close the public hearing? Um, and again, uh, the applicant has does always get the opportunity to to do a rebuttal. And um, oh, right. Um, so. So maybe you want to listen listen to that let's, and, let's listen to and that make and your decision. Uh, then we can <clears throat> recaucus. <clears throat> so applicant, if um... you're on, folks, <laughs> you have the opportunity to rebut or not as you choose. Uh, Sean, Sean, would you like to say anything? No, Andy. I think uh, you can take the microphone. Thank you. Okay. Um, so do you want me to reply? Yes, please. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, Diane, um, she did bring up several interesting points. Um, and um, I think all of the information or most of the information that she is seeking is in all the documents. And I'm not trying to make anyone go dig for them, but they're, the, the wrap itself is a, is a large document that we we met with DEP and EPA multiple times and all the information is in there. So uh, I think we did a, a, a very thorough job and we had a lot of interaction with DEP. Um, and um, so I would just urge you to go through uh, the document and the uh, and some of this, um, the, the plans. And that's that's really all that's really all I have. I don't want to step too far out of bounds here, but do you guys just want to add a couple of words on the, the truck tracking point and um, just the safety effectiveness of the removal? Yes. Um, yeah, Andrea, you. I think you should chime in on that one because I think we have. I know in the in the specs we definitely have wheel washes and all the normal construction things. So I'm going to turn it over to Andrea. Yeah. The um, it may actually even be on the, on the construction plans, but there are uh, several different measures um, that will be in place to um, eliminate any tracking. And so there'll be um, stone construction entrances. So where they turn on and off um, any paved area, they, will have to drive over those entrances and they um, serve to basically sh shake off a lot of the dirt um, that's tracked on the tires and it so it stays in the um, in the stone area then there's um, dust controls that have to be you know sweeping up the roads and um, to manage dust and then um, I don't know specifically what we have in the specs, but the um, as far as washing the truck sleeve has to be like steam cleaned or if it's just uh, a wash before they 
go off-site for the off-site disposal. Um, but that's the only time the trucks will be leaving the site is when they're doing the disposal. So they'll, um, the trucks that are going in and out of the wetlands um, are staying on site until they're done with the, um, done with the sediment removal. Uh, and I'm sure I, you know, I could, I could dig into those tech specs um, to, to get some of that information. I just, I don't have it memorized. But everything complies with the, you know, there's the um, Connecticut guidelines for um, sediment and erosion control. And so everything, oh, the construction design complies with those uh, guidelines. Is the, uh, is the RAP a publicly available document? It should be. Everything we've submitted to DEP um, is available. Freedom of Information Act, but I, um, and, and the drawings, the, basically the drawings from the RAP those were what we submitted with our application. We next, you have next the fifty-five page application that you submitted to us. Um, yeah, was it that many pages? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh well, yes, almost. It was a twenty-four page um, application and site plans. And if you if you need to wrap, and we, we we don't want you to have to go through a foyer, if we can we can provide that to you. So if uh, that's something you, you want to see, but it is a publicly available document. Um, it might not be available through the deep website um, that easily. So if if necessary, we can provide it to you. Okay. Anything further, rebuttal? Uh, not hearing, hearing none. Um, uh, commissioners, um, I think now is our chance to talk about whatever it is that we're going to talk about among ourselves on this application. Okay, hearing uh, no further uh, conversation, I'm going to uh, move that we uh, close the public hearing. Um, I think, well, I personally have reviewed a good deal of this information and have found the presentation to be reasonably in, in sync with what I read. And furthermore, I know that um, it just simply isn't going to be permitted in the state of Connecticut to have a bunch of trucks full of, you know, polluted soil to go uh, charging through our streets without any cover or protection. I don't think it's uh, something that we can involve ourselves in constructively. Um, I think some of it, some of what happens, we have to take on faith. Um, so uh, I move that we uh, close the public hearing. Um, do I hear uh, a second uh, on that from anyone? <clears throat> sure, I'll second. Okay. Uh, any any discussion before we vote? Um, so what, uh, what about um? What uh, Diane Laura Cella said about um, an LEP, an outside review. What 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 do commissioners think about that? And uh, Alexis, uh, how you know how how does that work at this point? If that were at all considered. Um, well, I can go back to your. So you you have had a third party review of um, again of a uh, for example a, there's been a dispute regarding the extent of a wetland and you have one wetland delineation and you you hired or have had an applicant hire uh, a second uh, wetland science, soil scientist um, to review it or a wetland scientist a second opinion as far as the impacts to the wetlands and watercourses. Um, I don't 
I guess I I would still disagree with Ms. Lorcella that you that you as the Inland Wetland Agency um, under your the Inland Wetland Regulations, which let me just pull up and read. So in the past, when you've reviewed applications, you've utilized a portion of your uh, regulations that define your filing fees. And it includes language. Um, a second that allows you to basically charge the applicant an additional filing fee when there are circumstances where you need an outside expert. But I don't know if this, um, you know, again, it, it does go back to the, the question of, well, what is, you're not the EPA. So again, it, nope, it, you're, it's not your decision it's not part of your the the breadth of your decision to determine the adequacy of their remediation, um, or whether the um, the the remediation is sufficient. Um, it is your job to ensure that the um, the activities proposed for the remediation don't um, um, you know irreparably damage or eliminate the wetlands. Um, so you, it is your job to make sure that they follow the, um, that they don't, you know, unduly remove any uh, existing wetlands if they can avoid it. Does that make sense? So yeah. going back to the regulations, um, I'll just read it. Um, in addition to the fees described in section E above, upon receipt of an application, the agent or agency may require the additional technical assistance of outside consultants in evaluating an application if the agent or agency finds that city staff is not able to complete a technical review of an application in the time period prescribed by state statute or that the expertise required to review the application is outside of that of city staff. Um, the purpose of this fee schedule for the purpose of this fee schedule. An outside consultant means a professional who's not an employee of the city, including but not limited to engineering, environmental, hydrogeology, legal, and wetland professionals. Um, and so I think it comes down to what is having an LEP. Um, I, I mean, I think if you were questioning the adequacy of the um, the wetland restoration plan. I think that you you would have a, a, a clear avenue to get a second opinion if you had real mm -hmm. concerns about the um, the the you know the way that soil is proposed to be basically uh, excavated and then filled and then um, replanted. I just don't know if. Um, um, you know, it's if I, I do understand the the environmental concern of uh, you know these these heavy metals. I just don't know if the Inland Wetland Agency necessarily has the the jurisdiction jurisdiction to look at the adequacy of the remediation, um, and that includes the depth of excavation. Okay. My my own response. A little different from Alexis's, uh, Commissioner Brown. I, I have not seen anything in the presentation, and I've read it. Uh, that what's what was in writing and and what I've heard. I have not seen anything that makes me think that the work scheduled to be undertaken is insufficient. Um, there has been nothing that I've seen that says um, it isn't enough soil being removed. Um, I I. Um, I believe from what I've read, and I have to believe, I have to have some faith in the outside experts, um, that, um, uh, that the material that is corrupt is being removed, and that which we need to remain is remaining. Um, with all respect to uh, Ms. Laricella, uh, we, our work has nothing whatever to do with uh, shellfish, 
uh, in uh, in the sound. Uh, it's um, it, it might be a concern with the um, uh, brackish or saltwater wetlands, but uh, but it's none of our concern in my view. Um, it seems to me that it's uh, uh, this is a long procedure, and there's a 125 acres that have to be coped with. And it seems to me that uh, for all that they've spent now four years on this one little spot, uh, suggests that this is going to be a very long process. And uh, uh, rather than uh, run the risk of duplicating work that's already been done. Um, and not really having any more confidence in the new work than the old, uh, that I would vote to um, uh, to uh, to close the issue as far as wetlands, inland wetlands is concerned. I ask one question of the applicant: um, What was the deepest point that you guys detected contaminated metals? Was that I, the <coughs> I don't have that answer crisp right off the top of my head because mostly because we did a lot of sediment sampling and it was several years ago and it covered a lot of area. So I don't remember exactly the depth. It also varies from wetland to wetland and where you are. So uh, I, I believe we saw impact at um, say four feet below grade, but I don't remember if that was in salt water or if that was in fresh water. Um, and we saw it um, at various depths, but it was something, it was something like that. But it's, it's, but it's not, it's not just where is their impacted material it's how impacted is the material and is it showing toxicity? So it gets into it. There's a lot of other pieces involved. I have an additional question for the yes, applicants. Yes, sorry, Commissioner. Oh, I just want to rest to the commission. It might be good for us to see some of those reports just to know. And again, go ahead. I just wanted to share that with my, my peers. Um, I saw on the on the um, plans that you're, you know, I saw the plant list and that uh, you're planting everything eight feet on center, I believe, and then overseeding. Um, I did not see any notes, but I, I, I may not have, I may have missed it on um, controlling uh, invasives because there's going to be a lot of exposed soil and with seeding sometimes you know the with the exposed soil uh you know other unwanted plants will be coming in i was wondering what the plan was for that for you know making sure that the native seeding is actually effective yeah i can speak to that the the first step is is definitely in the planting that we have the companion seed, the annual rye. So it'll be overseeded the area so that the um, invasives will be less likely to um, be able to take hold. It gives our, our native plantings a better start. Um, we also have um, a Phragmites that'll be removed when we when we remove the sediment so and because of the depth we're removing the roots are will be gone of the phragmites um, that is currently in some of the excavation areas uh, and then monitoring i'm trying to remember i know we have to do um, monitoring to report to the Army Corps for the tidal wetlands. And I don't have to get back to you on what we have planned for the um, freshwater wetlands, but I know we have to, we have to make sure that what we've planted survives so that it's, a, we have the, the right aerial coverage of the vegetation and um, that it's restored, that it, it be, is a wetland. 
Okay, thank you. So I think we have to try to develop a consensus here, whether we're going to um, uh, have some additional requirements to this applicant. Um, <clears throat> if, uh, uh, Matt, if you can say specifically what it is that, uh, that you'd like them to provide, we can hold the hearing open until it is provided. Uh, I believe that's correct, is it not, Alexis? Uh, yes. Yeah, we have, right, right. We have what do we have? We have of, uh, 35 days, um, technically. Yeah, I'm, I'm a little stuck. I mean, I'm not trying to be difficult, and I understand the extent of our purview is really the application and, and what they're doing here. Um, I just don't feel great knowing that um, there's potentially more contaminated and toxic soil down there um but i don't know i, I really don't know and uh, I, don't, I don't know if this is the time or the place to request those reports that were done four or five years ago um i just kind of defer to you guys i mean how do you guys feel i matt i'm i'm with you i mean i don't think anybody wants to see this revisited you know, five years down the road and realize that there was more contamination deeper down than we realized and have to go through this again. Um, I'm kind of thinking about the uh, island that came up a while ago. There was cleanup there. <clears throat> and I, I can't remember the specifics if it wasn't cleaned up as much as it should have been, but there turned out to be runoff. And, um, and they're still looking for funds to clean up the island again because it wasn't done properly the first time. So I'm kind of with you at, at where to go from here. Alexis, do we have uh, records of the uh, submission from uh, the, the original submission on the test, the test borings? I think we're talking now 2017. Um, I mean, so if you, um, I don't know. Uh, we we have. I don't. You're, you're talking about the applic the inland wetland permit application that was approved about five years ago for the test borings. Yes. Um, no. So you gave you issued a an inland wetland permit um, so that the so that NRG could dig and disturb um, small portions of wetlands to, to do their studies. So, um, so we did not get that the test boring information from that. Um, the, the state of Connecticut uh, and EPA looked at that, but you as the inland wetland agency did not look at the, the test borings. We did go back out and do it do um, an inspection after that was done and, and looked at the area that had been dug up and it was very hard to find the area that was you know dug up um, versus the undisturbed wetland. Um, so again, it goes back, I guess, to your purview. So no, I don't I don't have that information. Um, Can I jump in? Um... So we are here to uphold the statutes adopted by the state with regard to the functionality um, and value of inland wetlands. As far as we're concerned, I don't know that any level of contamination has an effect on that. And this, the scope to remediate the contamination is, is beyond our purview. So really what we're here to confirm is that the work that's being proposed maintains the function and value of the wetlands. And um, that's it. Uh, so as far as I'm concerned, as much as I would love a second opinion at this point, I think it's too late. Um, maybe it's not too late. I don't know. I feel like uh, nothing has been presented to us that to me seems untoward or misleading. Um, and so I guess I'm inclined to 
um, put some a little bit of trust into what's been presented to us, I think in good faith um, and keep my eye focused on what we're actually here to, um, you know, comment on. Uh, Commissioner uh, Balliot, I can, uh, I may be able to enlighten you slightly uh, on the matter of Peach Island. I was very much personally involved in the beginning uh, when that, uh, uh, ruined building uh, was before the land trust to be uh, resolved. Um, a, um, um, a material that had been used on the roof of that building uh, to insulate the chimney from the roof itself uh, contained PCBs. And um, in order to uh, ascertain the extent of the PCBs, the land trust brought in a, um, a scientist, an engineer, um, who uh, brought in his own team and uh, they uncovered a fairly substantial amount of uh, PCBs in different spots and federal law required that those be uh, excavated and removed ultimately to Michigan. Um, and the, once that requirement had been made, a full uh, team had been brought in by barge to do the excavations and they had done additional testing um, and had found more pollution, which raised the, which doubled the price. Um, it wasn't a, it wasn't a matter of, the, of excavation having been completed and then found to be failed. It was a matter of testing, not having found the ultimate extent of the PCB infestation in the, in the property. Uh, that even as I say that, it sounds like hair splitting, but it might be a little bit more uh, uh, revealing for, for you to know what, what happened out there. <clears throat> um, well, we might want to just put this to a vote, I suppose. Um, would that be out of place, Alexis? Uh, okay. No, so you, you <laughs> that would okay. work. You do have a, a uh, motion on the floor and it's been, been uh, seconded. I, I would just add that, you know, there are various roles when you say the city. Your role currently is just as the Inland Wetland Agency. That doesn't mean that you can't do um, other things as the Conservation Commission. Um, you can't, uh, doesn't mean that the city, if it elected to, could, um, um, you know, a, 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 I don't know, look into an appeal of, of um, you know, if it, if it had reason, an appeal of the DEP uh, remediation permit. Um, but that you, you, the group of you right now are acting as inland wetland um, agency members. I didn't catch that last bit. That's all right. That was just my two cents. Oh. One and a half, two, close enough. <clears throat> I'm going to make a motion that we close this public hearing. I'll second that. Moved and seconded. Uh, if there's more discussion, we're open for that. Hearing none, then uh, I think let's let's take a vote from among the commissioners here, Alexis. Shall we not? Or I'll just go from the top across. Um, Cheryl Brown? Uh, I, I agree, yes. Matt Pence? Nay. Nay? Nay, sorry. Thank you. Uh, Steve Clotty? Yes. John Mailing? Yay. Jen Ballion? Aye. So motion, motion carries um, five, four to one. Okay. Um, I think that, that wraps up our discussion of S21-587 for tonight, does it not? No, we still, next on the agenda is the 
decision, right? Discussion decision. Yeah, it, or just any any discussion. <laughs> Do you want to have any further discussion or uh, guidance? Typically, you don't make a decision until um, you know your staff tries to draft a resolution that tries to cover any any concerns that you have, like the Sunman tracking. Um, but if you have any points for a direction or any specific concerns that you would like me to try to incorporate in a draft resolution for you to consider at your next meeting prior way. Um, I'd like to see some monitoring of the um, seating, the overseeding to make sure that uh, you know the, the, the percentage of invasive species is kept to a minimum, um, maybe for you know, say two years to make sure that the soil is established uh, or the planting over the soil is established successfully. Why don't, we, why don't we establish a percentage? Yeah, that, that would be. What would what do you think would make sense? Ten percent. Uh, you mean no? Ten uh, percent. I mean, if we could, if we could have as a condition uh, in a uh, in a resolution, uh, one that said that uh, uh, at the end of the uh, the planning stage, I presume that we'd be talking about uh, completion within what period of time, Alexis? A year on this kind of replanning? Um, um, I would say that. Well, I I can certainly come up with a draft uh, condition that defines um, success for both the, um, the planting coverage of native plants and that also includes, defines what success for the invasive plant management is, um, probably a two year period after initial planting. That's a very good idea, that's what we should do. What do you think, Cheryl? I, I agree. That would be great. Okay. We can have a fairly uh, very specific uh, description of the intent of this commission uh, as far as uh, the impact of invasives on this property is concerned. That's what we need to have. And the more specific we can be, the better. I don't know if 10% is a reasonable amount, but uh, uh, we could give it a okay. give it a shot. Seems like a fairly good allowance for uh, uh, the occasional phragmites to work its way through at the end of the planning process. <clears throat> I will uh, draft something. I will uh, think about it further and draft something for you in advance of the meeting. All right. So we can have a resolution by next meeting, and we can uh, and we can resolve this then. All right, that would that would uh, end this for tonight. I think. Um, does anybody have another comment or just any sort of a, uh, a sequitur uh, before we adjourn? Okay, here and done. Um, then I think. Do we have to move now to, to, to resume our normal schedule or can we just move to adjourn? You can move to adjourn if you like. Okay, uh, so moved. Second. In favor. Aye. Aye. See you all in two weeks. <clears throat> Thank you for your time. Have a good night. Have a good night, all around. Thank you, nice to meet you. Guys. All Thank you, Alexis. Enjoy South Carolina. Thanks. Yeah, I will say <laughs> good enough. Ugh. That was a long one. I wasn't was expecting it. I was not expecting that. Well, you're not. You're not in many EPA. I mean, I don't know how to say you don't have any, you don't have jurisdiction. That's a funny one.